I had been working with art for most of my life as a, an only child. It became my friend. It was my hobby. It was my friend. It took up time. And being an only child, sometimes you could nudge your parents a lot. And the more art materials that they gave me, the happier I was. And they were happy, too. <laughs> so it kind of worked out. Um, in high school, I was a fine arts major. I had followed up with going to school in Boston at Chamberlain Junior College. And then from there, did night courses at the Boston Museum School. Um, when I had completed my work there, uh, I was there from 1969 until 1971, and then I had my children, and then work, and then that kind of took my life. Mm -hmm. uh, retirement's a wonderful thing. It brings you <laughs> back to doing the things in life that you love to do and didn't have time for. So this was very, very interesting, and it was really wonderful. I had oils, um, but the cleaning of the brushes and the elements that you needed to, you know, have your brushes clean, it was starting to really get to me, and I couldn't, uh, was having some breathing issues, and I was told, you know, you have to find another way. And uh, I did, I did, and what a color was it? This piece here, um, I have to really give a special thank you to Andrew Bessard. Um, he is from Abbeville, Louisiana. And I really wanted to learn how to build depth. And depth was very, very important because with watercolor, you can find that you're very flat. And I needed something to push back. And he taught me how to do that. Uh, he also taught me the use of a hake brush, which petrified me and I only have like 30 of them so I thought it was time to really learn how to use these brushes because they really give you some beautiful detail mm -hmm. and so with this I was able to get my background in I was able to get some ice in things that I had not been able to do before it was pretty pretty interesting this one here um, I like to call this one just let's dance uh, I was having a moment and I thought you know what I let's just see what color can take you and come to find out it can take you all over the world <laughs> color is an amazing thing and uh, I just had a lot of fun with this I wanted to get some design pattern in I wanted to show that you know we can dance and flowers and berries and it, it, just a splash of color that's what it's all about this frame here actually is made by a girl who lives in Sturbridge. She opened up the distillery and um, in Sturbridge, and I was lucky enough to have her make these before the, the distillery really got going, because now she doesn't have any time for me. Okay. <laughs> now, this one here I just found um, online, and uh, you know, if I see something and it hits me, mm -hmm. uh, it, then I need to have it. These two paintings here, I actually did for Gabriel McCarthy. He was opening a business and wanted something for his lobby, yep. and asked me if I would do that. And I asked him, I said, do you have any color in mind or anything that you would like in particular? He said, no, no, just let your mind go and paint so, what, what comes up, you know, comes to you. This was the first one that I had done. This one is just a dream. And it, I don't know if you can see, but I've got uh, like a grandfather clock there and a watch down here on the bottom of the ocean. And everything is always set at five o'clock because businesses close at five o'clock and I think that's the time the fun starts. And this one here is Sea Cross Lovers. This little box that I have down here uh, actually sits on my bureau and it's a wish box that I had bought in Stonington a long time ago. And I thought, well, you know, what can I put in the ocean that looks like it's sinking? Oh. And so that was one, and then my favorite shoe is there. And then, of course, the boat, USS Hope. We all need that. Mm -hmm. I do paint by like myself. I also uh, run a workshop, and I have uh, some students that come in on uh, Thursday evenings. Not tonight, of course. Um, and then it went so well that other people had asked me if I would open up another evening, and so I did. 
and so now we have Tuesdays and Thursdays. It's watercolor workshop. Oh, I see. <laughs> and it's in Sturbridge. It's in my home. Uh, we try to make it very relaxed. We do take a break with coffee, tea, and some uh, desserts, and it's lovely. My thought about teaching other people is to get rid of the fear. A lot of the people coming into my workshop have never even held a brush before. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, but yet it is a desire for them to want to learn. Mm -hmm. And I think it's wonderful. And when they can go home with something like, even if it's a bookmark or a postcard, it's something that they can look at and say, look what I did. I did that and I never held a brush before. So it, it was very, very rewarding, yeah, not be... only for me, but mostly for them. These two here, uh, this one I did for when my granddaughter went away with her mom and dad for a beach vacation. And my daughter was, uh, you know, telling me how much Tate loved the beach. And uh, I found this wonderful picture of her and was able to get some beach area in. And I just, I just loved it. And uh, she really came out okay. So when Tate is 18, she can have that. This one here, I call this Christmas stroll or a winter stroll. I just wanted to remember back when I was a child and what it felt like to take my pooch out during a snowstorm, which my parents wouldn't have done, but I did and I loved it. And so I, um, I had painted. I just had to paint it, snowstorm and all. I will do sketches uh, sometimes, then other times I'm very freeform. I like to just, uh, you know, go with the paint. Uh, I'm not the greatest at drawing, but I really love color. And so I kind of know where that brush is going to take me, and that is my drawing mechanism. That's what works. And this one here is called Summer Bloom. This is no pencil, no sketch. It was just, let's go with some color. Let, let's get it in there. I love the coloration of Carl's and the sage greens. This one here, I, I just, odd. yeah, I had to get something really kind of odd in there to, to separate from the prettiness. Or something a little bit bold. When I was asked to do these, I never painted so big in all my life. Oh, okay. And so that was a challenge. And I had started with this one. And then once I started getting the hang of it, I'm like, yeah, this feels really good. It was like totally sprawled out, room in abundance. It was great. It was really great. And talk about imagination. That's what you need. It's a matter of fact, I think Gabriel said to my husband, what kind of mind can think of these things? <laughs> so I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> this one here is a wedding day. And somebody had asked me how you get light on dark. And it's called layering. You've got to know how to layer. And uh, this one took me right there. Uh, I knew exactly where I wanted to go. And gouache is the answer. So That's the paper? That, no, gouache the... would be the, the white paint uh, I see and it's very thick it's not like your watercolor it's, it comes very very thick so does it make a difference what paper you use as well in terms it does of make the absorption it makes a huge difference um, I will use 140 pound 300 gram paper you need that for absorption you're using so much water that you need something to be able to take that all in. Oh. You're going to have a lot of oopses. Yeah. <laughs> it just comes with the territory. Water finds a way. And to control water is like you're really struggling. You'll never control water. So what you do is you add more paint. And then you're starting to make a balance. And you have a balance between water and paint. Um, but it's learning that because water can just take off on you. Uh, so you have to learn how to control that. And that's something that I like to teach in the class as well. Uh, corrections can happen. You, you can do correcting. Um, you just have to know how to balance the paint with the water. And uh, what are you going to do in that correction? What are you going to 
cover that mistake up with and is it going to work? And I can give you a really good example. This whole thing was an error because I had clipped the paper. So when I was trying to frame it, I was getting a big paper clip in the area. I'm like, okay, I need to correct this. Mm -hmm. So I went back in and tried to get the ground, the ground cover almost as perfect as you could match up here. Everything has to be in balance. And um, so, yes, you can correct. You just have to know how. You have to know uh, that every mistake can be dealt with. I have many paintings that I have looked at and said, well, I could correct this and I could correct that. But then just let's start over. <laughs> and, and that works, too. It's pretty, it's pretty wonderful. Like we have three here. Um, these two are kind of similar, so we could go with these two here. Uh, we had had a day where the sunset was just incredible, and I picked up a lot of reds in the photograph, and I thought, let me get some of that down on paper. This is called Red Sky, and then this one here is Fall Sky, so it was in the fall. And you could see some of the branches have lost their leaves, a little ice pattern happening. Mm -hmm. um, that one there is sort of like a beach, a beach scene in the fall. And uh, I love working with red. I think red is a pop color, so it's pretty neat. And you're working in different sizes as well, it's, yes. you know, compared yes. to what we just saw. Um, I can back. do bookmarks. I can do five by sevens. I can do greeting cards. Um, I, you know, I, I just love experimenting with different sizes and uh, the elements of what's going on outdoors. Uh, really gives you this wonderful uh, interest uh, to move forward. On this little piece here, um, this one I call Daisy in a Screen because it looks like a TV screen. And that just kind of happened. I didn't plan for that to happen. I actually had done the background, let it dry, went back in and looked and I'm like, wow, that's really cool. What can I stick in that TV? <laughs> and I thought some daisies. So I thought that that was, that was uh, really fun. It was a fun piece to do. Yeah, and I like the way the frame picks up the colors that yeah. you've used in the piece as well. And, That's always very yeah. interesting. And the frames, I think, is a very, very important part because it has to blend with your painting. It becomes part of the art. Um, when, when you're just using tans and whites, you need something to give it a little, uh, you know, and um, the frames do it. The frames really do it. This one here I call on the brink because it's like everything is falling over. You can see the falls and the trees are still standing. I just love working with darks and lights. I think that it's a very, very interesting format and um, it's just something that, that really works. And the frame I thought was superb. I thought when I saw that frame, yeah, that's for this. <laughs> and so it works. So this happens to be one of my, my favorite ones. I really do like the way that came out. This one here is Tiny Dancer. I was thinking again of my granddaughter and how much she loves to dance. And she had told me about, about a dream that she had had of dancing with the stars. And so I thought this was perfect. You get the moon, the sky, and the beautiful ballerina. And, uh, yeah, I thought this was very cute and appropriate. It's been quite a journey. It really has been. It's been wonderful. Okay. Uh, it keeps you young. It does. It keeps you young, it keeps you happy, and it keeps you active. Your mind is active. Thank you, yeah. Margaret. Thank you very much. This has been thrilling.